Alderman Sufferton, if you don't mind reading our suspensions of the rule to allow for remote participation. Uh, due to the executive order issued by Governor Jimmy Pritzker, staff recommends the suspension of the rules regarding in-person attendance requirements for public meetings, allowing for city council members and CSAP to participate in this meeting remotely. Um, Second. Do we need to take a roll call vote for that, Director? Yes, you do. Sorry, oh, thank you, Kelly. Alder Alderman Sufferton. Aye. Alderman Fleming. Aye. Alderman Rainey. It looks like Alderman Rainey's iPad is connecting from what I'm seeing. Alderman Rainey, can you hear us? Is that an I? Yes. Can you give us a thumbs up if that's an I? Because your computer is still connecting. Um, she has audio at this time. Rainey, was that an I for the suspension of the rules for a remote meeting? I, it, could anybody read her lips? I think it was an I. You're still muted. Well, Alderman Rainey works on that. It looks like we have enough for it. Um, you could call my name. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you. Alderman Braithwaite. I don't think he's here. And then Alderman Ruth Simmons. Aye. Four okay. zero. Thank you. Motion passes and we will continue with remote participation. Uh, next, we have approval of meeting minutes uh, from October 12th and October 26th meetings this is for action thank you alderman sufferton aye alderman rainey aye alderman fleming aye alderman braithwaite alderman rue simmons aye motion passes and next we have public comment And Mr. Vasilko is the only person signed up for it. You have three minutes, Mike. Eight thirty. Um, okay, so as far as uh, items on the agenda, obviously I would oppose increasing the uh, sanitation service charges doesn't look like much when you start breaking it down, but a lot of people are still unemployed. More people will probably become unemployed still during this COVID price, uh, crisis. So adding more fees and charges uh, is really not uh, helpful to those people. I do agree with, if I understand it correctly, reducing, slightly reducing the wheel tax late fee for those that uh, are in that situation for the same reason. Nobody can afford to pay extra fees and fines right now. I question, there seems to be quite a bit of um, information technology upgrades in the bills list, well exceeding $100,000. I'm curious if that's all necessary. Uh, I don't understand why there's employment testing standards costs when no one's being hired. It's only about $3,200, but if you're not hiring anybody, why do you need testing employment testing standards upgrade? And um, I take issue with, I think somebody like the mayor should probably pay for this. Um, the recruitment cost of $7,800 for HR Gov, which we all know was really a wasted effort and maybe not even a, a sincere effort. So I think that should be removed and somebody like the mayor should have to pay for that. Lastly, I'm curious about the, uh, there's a posting, I think it was yesterday or this week for 
looks like about a dozen or 13 new positions in, in the library, parks and rec, health and human services, quite a few for the library, quite a few for health and human services, um, one for the fire department. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for your comment. And uh, we have no one else signed up for public comment. Uh, That's correct. Correct. And we're going to move forward. Um, if to the committee, if you have any items on the consent, uh, please make note and we can remove it and we will pass a consent agenda. How about Amazon credit? A2, yes, thank you, Autumn Rainey. A8. Anything else? Okay. So with that, I uh, move the consent agenda for approval. Second. Alderman Sufferton? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Fleming? Aye. Alderman Ruth Simmons? Aye. Okay, consent passes. And now we will go to A2. Uh, staff recommends approval of the City of Edmonton's GMO Harris Amazon credit card activity for the period ending August 26, 2020, in the amount of $12,409.55. I move this for action. Second. I'll take the roll. Alderman Sufferton? I abstain. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Fleming? Aye. Alderman Ruth Simmons. Aye. Alderman Fleming, uh, I'm sorry, motion passes. Alderman Fleming, A8, please. A8 is ordinance 111-0-20, amending city code section 8-4-11 to revise sanitation service charges charges for introduction. Second, um, is there a second? Second. And I just took this off since it is a change, um, a fee change. I just wanted staff to explain it a little bit so everyone is clear what it is. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Dave Stomach. I'm the Public Works Agency Director. Uh, as part of the budget process, one of the things that we are attempting to do is to get the solid waste fund into the positive. It has had a negative fund balance since its inception for several years. Uh, we're asking for price increases that would take effect uh, July 1, 2021. And we are raising the cost for uh, refuge collection at single family residential homes, as well as condo units. Uh, we're also recommending yard waste increases. And then we're also recommending a, an increase to collect recycled material from the multifamily apartment buildings with six units or greater. Is there a specific question I could address? Well, just one, how will people, I know it's not until July, but how will we let people know the price is going up? And then if you could just tell people what the sanitation um, fund, a ref or the fund is used for. Uh, to answer your first question, once the ordinance is passed, we will uh, distributed the information through our standard city newsletters and then asked aldermen to include it in their newsletters that go out to their constituents as well. Uh, I will see if we can add a flyer about it when we send out a water bill as well to make people aware that the uh, sanitation rates would go up in July. Uh, the funds that we raise for the solid waste funds are mostly spent on our contracts with our outside vendors. Uh, we hire group to collect uh, residential refuge as well as yard waste. We hire Lakeshore to collect uh, refuge and recycling from condominium buildings. And 
the third cost is for our own employees, Evan City of Evanston employees, that collect the recycling from uh, single family homes and the apartments. So that's those are the major costs that we have in the solid waste fund. Thank you. So Mr. Vasilko, to your point, I, I also agree about um, fees and fines at this point. However, the city is somewhat supplementing people's trash pickup. So um, as he said, this, this is used for very specific um, cost. Um, and I think everyone would agree it's a convenience and it's a health issue to have all the trash picked up. So um, that is why I'm supporting this and hopefully that explanation will make sense to people who are watching as well. Ottoman Rainey? Yes, um, Mr. Stoneback, I didn't reread this today, but I, you, I know you called me and I didn't get back to you because I had 42 calls. I counted them before the council meeting about defunding the police and not voting for this budget. And I, I, I just didn't get to everything. Um, however, I did talk to you and to the council about um, not charging people for services they did not use. And specifically, um, I had several inquiries about um, people who did not use all of the services they were being charged for, empty cars specifically. Um, one woman specifically owns a two flat where they have um, two uh, solid waste containers, two of the black cans, only one is ever used. And so why should they have to pay? I don't mind paying those people paying a little extra to cover the cost of garbage service. But if you're not using it, you shouldn't have to pay for everybody else, I don't think. Um, I happen to know of a household where there's one individual who has a feeding tube who does not use their garbage at all and has a vacant unit in their building. And it's a two flat. They don't use either. Uh, the neighbors use it. So they are being charged for two cans where they don't use either. Um, I have no problem charging them for one, but charging them for two is just an outrageous expense for people who are not using one can. So I think that we should, if they're not using a can, we should not charge them for it. And we should take the can away. And I know we don't have that practice. And I, I, would, I would like people to be able to turn in the can. And our point is, to encourage the reduction of solid waste and increase recycling. And that's what the woman who, who first brought this up to me says. They need a larger recycling bin and one less solid waste can. And I just think the council would agree to that. I mean, how many people want to do that? Probably not that many, but we should encourage everybody to strive for that. So Autumn and Rainey, I, I support everything that you're saying. I think it's totally in line with our environmental goals here. And I've had, I've actually reduced my can. So maybe director, if you want to speak about the smaller cans versus the larger, what the options are and how we can um, address the issue of a mandated uh, second can, especially when you have multifamilies that are owner occupied and possibly, you know, a second family living in the other unit the examples that Audem and Rainey have given as well. And I have that same experience where my recycling is overflowing and my um, regular waste is um, underutilized. So can you give us an immediate response and then how can we take a council action to um, move forward with some of the recommendations Audem and Rainey just had? But I'm only, I'm not talking about big buildings. I'm just talking about two and three flats, nothing larger. Right. Okay. So uh, this would require an ordinance for modification. So we would prefer to uh, bring this back as a discussion item at the December uh, APW meeting to further discuss this and let staff get better prepared to uh, try to address some of your concerns. Thank you, Director. Is there any further discussion? Can I add something just to that? Because I, I wasn't clear on this part. 
So on Marini, this person has a two flat and if the one unit is either empty or even if both are full, they're not using two cans. That's and correct. Our, and our current practice is to require a can per unit. Right, even though it's empty every single week. And so a director Stoneback, if that unit is empty, they, well, I guess your answer to that, I, I would like to know, I guess, can they return the can? And then if someone moves in the unit, we can just bring another can out there. No, but even if you have, even if you have a two flat and one unit is unoccupied and the can is always, we still require them. Oh, okay, to that's what I'm question. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you. So director, a, a, a report on this would be great just to answer questions that aren't clear and um, give the facts and explore options um, for more efficiency. So if we could do that on our next APW agenda. Uh, staff would prefer to bring it back in December rather than the second meeting in November, if that's acceptable. That's sure. fine. Thank you, Director. Thank Is you. there any other discussion? Can you take the roll? Yeah, I'm sorry. Alderman Sufferton? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Fleming? Aye. Alderman Ruth Simmons? Aye. Uh, motion passes. I'm sorry, I thought we had one more. Uh, is, are there any items for consideration? Are there any items for discussion or communication? May I have a motion to adjourn? I motion, I move for adjournment. Thank you. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. Planning and development is noticed that we're starting at five, but if we could take a um, 10 minute break or is five minutes enough? We'll take I don't believe that you can start earlier than what's prescribed. So it is okay. 10 minutes before five now. Oh, I didn't realize I was ahead of time. So perfect. We'll go ahead and start at five o'clock. Planning and development will begin. Thank you.